Today we will talk about the inverse of a matrix. Given an n by n matrix, so a square matrix, we say that A is invertible if there is a matrix C such that A times C is equal to the identity matrix. So recall the identity matrix is a square matrix with ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. We can show that if such a matrix exists, then it is commutative, which means you can switch the order, and that it's also unique. So if AC equals identity and also AB equals BA equals the identity, then we can multiply B with the identity and it won't change anything. But the identity is AC, so we replace that. And matrix multiplication is associative, so we can multiply BA first, but BA is the identity, and so B is equal to C. So this matrix, where if you multiply by A and you get the identity, is unique. So we call that the inverse, and we denote it as A to the negative 1. For a 2 by 2 matrix, we have a formula for the inverse. So this 2 by 2 matrix A, B, C, D, its inverse is given by 1 over A, D minus B, C. This is just a number, times the matrix where the entries are, the diagonals are switched, and the negative signs are on the off diagonals. So let's do a quick example and find the inverse of this matrix. Well. If we plug into the formula, then we get something like this, which we'll simplify to this matrix. Now let's just double check that this is indeed an inverse. So we want to multiply these two matrices out. We do row times column. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. So we get the identity matrix, and so this is the inverse of this matrix. An important consequence, and also a theorem, about a matrix being invertible is that if a matrix A is invertible, then the equation AX equals B has a unique solution. And we know what that solution is immediately. X has to be A inverse times B. So let's prove this. Let AX equal B and also AY equals B. So potentially two different solutions, but are they really different? Well, let's subtract this from each other. AX minus AY is zero, but using the fact that this is linear, we can rewrite this as A times X minus Y is equal to zero. But since A is invertible, let's apply the inverse to both sides. So we get something like this, but any matrix applied to the zero vector is a zero vector and this is its inverse so it's the identity so this is the vector x minus y and so we get that x minus y is equal to zero or that the vector x is equal to the vector y so the solution must be unique and the solution we can find just by applying the inverse to both sides so x is a inverse b what if we want to find an inverse of a larger matrix such as a 3 by 3 case. Well, there are formulas, but you can already anticipate that any sort of formula would be a little bit complicated because there are nine total terms, so it would be some expression that would involve nine of these terms. But there is a simple algorithm that we can use to find the inverse of a matrix. So let's think about how we can do such a thing. Well, let's go back to the original definition of the inverse of a matrix. It is a matrix such that a times c equals i. So if we write this explicitly out, then it's going to be a times c written out by its columns is equal to the identity matrix. So this is the vector a times the column c1 needs to equal 1, 0, 0, etc. a times the column c2 needs to equal 0, 1, and then zeros, all the way down to a times the c nth column is equal to 0, 0, all the way down to 1 at the last entry. So what we want to do is simultaneously solve a system of systems of linear equations. But we know how to do each one. We write out the augmented matrix. So we write down A 
and usually we write down just one of the columns on this side, but this time we have n of the columns, so something like this. But when we do solve systems of linear equations by using an augmented matrix, then the steps that we do to this side are always the same. We always do row reduction to make A into its reduced row echelon form. And the last columns of these augmented matrices get applied the same row operations, but it becomes the solution to the linear equations. So once we do our row operations to make this side a reduced row echelon form, on this side will be the solution to these linear equations, which are the columns of your inverse. So this would be the inverse of A. So let's do a quick example. Let's compute the inverse of this 3x3 three three matrix. To do so, we want to form this augmented matrix and apply row reduction until this side is in reduced row echelon form. In fact, it has to be the identity matrix or else it's not invertible. So first we want to make these zero, which means we get this matrix. Now remember not to forget to apply your row operations to this side as well as this side of the same type. So here we added three times row one into row two. So three times row one into row two. Or you can just think of this matrix as a one giant matrix. In the next step, we'll make this zero. Three times row two. Three times row two into row three will give you this matrix. And now we want to get rid of these two numbers but we can just add the third row into these two so that we get this matrix and now we divide this row by two so that we get this and so this side will be the inverse of your original matrix now we can always double check if we did it correctly so let's do that we want to multiply the original matrix by the inverse so row times column it will be eight plus zero minus seven is one. First row times second column 3 plus 0 minus 3 is 0, and 1, 0 minus 1 is 0. So far, so good. Second row in the columns, uh, uh oh. <laughs> negative 24 plus 10 plus 14 is 0. Negative 9 plus 4 plus 6 is 1. Negative 3 plus 1 plus 2 is 0. 16 minus 30 plus 14 is 0. 6 minus 12 plus 6 is 0. 2 minus 3 plus 2 is miraculously 1. So we did our computation correctly.